Welcome, everyone. We are thrilled to finally be celebrating the opening of Couch and Hospice House with you, the Couch and community. We had hoped to gather in person, much like our community sod turning event, outside within the beautiful Hospice House gardens. Instead, because of COVID safety precautions, we're gathered virtually from different locations and the celebration is recorded for watching at a later time. The celebration, however, is no less significant as we share with you a virtual community welcome and open house of the house that love built, hosted by Couch and Hospice and Island Health. My name is Krista Fox. I'm the chair of the Couch and Hospice House Task Force and a board member of Couch and Hospice. I want to acknowledge that Couch and Hospice House is located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Couch and people. It has been an honor to have the leadership of Couch and tribes in many aspects of this project since its early planning stages. As many of you know, we were honored by songs and dances from the Tsinkwa at the sod turning ceremony. I was privileged to witness the cleansing of Couch and Hospice House before it opened by Elder Linda Modeste and Marilyn Page. It has long been our vision that Couch and Hospice House would welcome all from our community. Together, we can make this a reality. And now we have brief messages from our other guest speakers who are celebrating with us on this remarkable community accomplishment. The Honourable Minister of Health, Adrian Dix. I welcome you, Minister Dix. Inevitably, every presentation these days starts with unmuting yourself. And uh, one of these days, as my colleagues in the legislature are with us, Doug Routley and Sonia Personal will know, I'll figure out the tech and not be the, uh, the least uh, tech friendly member of the legislature. But until that time, please bear with me. Uh, I want to say what a great day uh, today is because uh, today, uh, when this is broadcast, it'll be, it's December the 22nd, 2020. All of you, I think, um, who are watching this, or many of you, would have been amongst the hundreds of people that were there on July 18th, uh, 2019, uh, when we did the sod turning for this project. And really, it's an extraordinary project for people of the Couch and Valley, one that um, all of you and everyone involved, the team led by Krista, but so many other people, volunteers uh, in the community, raised millions of dollars for the capital construction costs of, of the hospice. And on November 2nd, the hospice, and uh, the hospice deals with people at some of their most difficult times, uh, of course, but the hospice uh, greeted uh, its first residence. And, um, and uh, it's now been operating for a little bit and we're holding this opening ceremonies really to recognize the extraordinary contributions of first of all the people who uh, support the hospice have supported hospice care for many years um, in the couch and valley for people uh, who contributed as i say millions of dollars to island health itself which uh, is of course providing uh, uh, i believe in the neighborhood of 1.4 $4 million dollars of operating funds for the hospice and for all those who know what a difference high quality compassionate caring locally supported end-of-life care means for people in community and not just for people um, who know and love people who are dealing with hospice care but everyone in the community who i think um, benefit from knowing such care exists that it's there that is part of the community that we as a community manage to love each other throughout our lives and uh, sometimes successfully, sometimes there are challenges and especially at end of life. It's an emotional time and it's what makes Couch and Hospice House and hospice houses like it across British Columbia so important. I am uh, truly grateful 
uh, to the people who have helped, uh, who have been involved in this project, uh, our own people at Island Health, of course, but everyone in the community who've done their share, including the local hospital district, including local elected officials, including my friend Doug Radley, my friend Sonia Personal, including and especially all the members of the task force uh, that uh, Krista has been so much part of. I just want us to thank everyone and say that this is an extraordinary day and we have to continue to do this in other communities. 2020 has been an improbable year uh, uh, in many respects, a terrible year. Some awful things have happened. The pandemic we're, leading, uh, we're living through has led to very significant consequences. Many, many people in our province and in the world, of course, have passed away. And also many have been affected in their businesses and their lives. Young people have had their lives disrupted. A lot of us have had their lives disrupted. But I think we've also done some extraordinary things. We're doing more surgeries uh, this month than in any other uh, December before this. We did more in November than any other November before this. And like what we've done here and what you've done here in building the hospice house, the Cowichan Hospice House, these things have been completed and done and open and are working ongoing during a time of pandemic, which of course has made them more difficult, but also has made the commitment of the community more extraordinary. I am very proud of this. We need to emulate what Cowichan has done in other communities which need better hospice, hospice care services. I know what it means for families. I know what it means for communities. And I'm honored, honored to thank all of you for your contribution and for all of you for making this dream a reality. When we got together on the territories of uh, the Cowichan people uh, on uh, July, in July 18, 2019, it seemed improbable that we could move so quickly that uh, that what was an empty lot would become what it has become already, a healthcare facility, but also a home for people at their most, uh, maybe most difficult, their last moments, an opportunity for people to have agency over their lives, right to the end of their lives. But you've done it and it's open. And as Minister of Health for BC, I know I join my colleagues in the legislature, Doug and Sonia, and everyone in the community in saying gratitude everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Dix. We know how busy you are and appreciate you taking the time to participate in this important community event. And now, MLA for Nanaimo North Cowichan, Doug Routley. Doug. Thanks to everyone on this uh, Zoom meeting. Thank you, Krista. Um, and thank you, of course, to the Hokaminum speaking Coast Salish people of the Mid Vancouver Island that I represent. Um, and thanks for being able to hold this event on their territory, on the Cowichan territory, for uh, uh, many of you. Um, it's an honor to speak at this event. I, I just am so uh, happy to see it happen. It's been a long time coming. Uh, Cowichan Hospice already offers emotional support and information for over 900 people a year living with advancing illness, caregiving and grieving the death of loved ones. Um, dedicated staff from Island Health provide nursing care alongside couch and hospice staff and volunteers to provide both emotional and practical support for families and patients. And uh, it needs to be said that the volunteers and hospice society are so well trained and so committed uh, have made such uh, an overwhelming, uh, overwhelming contribution to the lives of so many people. Uh, it's obviously a very, very stressful time when the time comes for a loved one to enter hospice. It's the last stop of their life's journey. Um, it's paramount that we do as much as possible to make people comfortable. And I'm so proud to be a part of that. And I want to thank you, Adrian, Minister, uh, Minister Dix, Thank you for the commitment that you've made to all of our communities, uh, the improvements that we've seen in services, but also facilities like this one that go on for a very long time to serve so many people. Um, thank you to the board, uh, particularly the task force board. Uh, thank you to the volunteers and a special personal thank you to Gretchen Hartley. Um, Gretchen's 
uh, a long-term commitment to this institution and and gaining this facility has been an inspiration to me for 15 years. It's been 15 years that, that we've been meeting over this uh, project. And uh, I, I can't say how, how happy I am to see it finally um, materialize. And 15 years is a blip and life is short. And it's important that we celebrate realizing our goals, but understand that these goals are longer term than we are. And many people who worked on this project are no longer here and uh, no longer participating. And I'm, I'm just uh, so honored to be representing people who have contributed over so many years and now uh, seeing this uh, materialize. So I join Minister Dix in thanking everyone involved. And when the community comes together, great things truly do happen. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And now I'm pleased to introduce to you Sonia Firstenau, MLA for the Cowichan Valley. Thank you, Krista, and I'm delighted to be here also on Coast Salish territories uh, in uh, down in Stronigan Lake. And I'm delighted to be here celebrating today the opening, uh, the official opening of the hospice. And I think for all of us, there are, as Doug just pointed out, this has been a long journey. Uh, for the hospice house. And uh, it's one that many of us can remember particular moments. And for me, it was uh, as a board member on the CBRD when Gretchen Hartley came and, and spoke to our board and really uh, identified that, that, of course, uh, death is something that is going to happen for all of us and all of our loved ones, and that we have a uh, a responsibility uh, as decision makers to ensure that we can have the conditions for the best part of uh, or the best way to ensure that people are, are reaching the end of their lives with respect and dignity and care and love. And it is that determination of, of Gretchen's that really stands out in my mind uh, as something that has propelled this forward. And then, of course, Krista. Uh, your unforgettable comments uh, the night that uh, Minister Dix came up to Cowichan in 2017 and we were talking about the new hospital, which I'm delighted is also moving forward. Uh, but Krista, you, you were so passionate and so clear and so articulate in the need for the hospice as part of our community's healthcare system and I'm, I'm grateful for your hard work to the, all of the members of the board, all of the volunteers, the donors, the community, the, the CBRD for its support and commitment, Island Health, uh, of course to Minister Dix and uh, the government. Uh, it is wonderful that we are now celebrating uh, this very important step uh, for our community. And I'm grateful to all of the hard work and passionate persistence of uh, the, the people who have made this happen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sonia. You have been a part of this journey for all along the way, so it's nice to hear from you. Please let me introduce you now to Leah Hollins, Island Health Board Chair. Thank you, Krista. Minister Dix, MLA Routley, and MLA Firstenau. I recognize the territory of the Cowichan tribes with respect and gratitude. I also recognize the Métis, Inuit, and other Indigenous peoples on Vancouver Island who live on these lands. We know the First Peoples' relationship to the land is of critical importance to health and wellness. Island Health is committed to creating a culturally safe health system with respect and humility at all stages of life. We are thankful for the insight and leadership from Couch and Elders who guided the design and training for staff to ensure Couch and Hospice House is welcoming and supports the health and care of Indigenous patients and families. Today and in the days and weeks and years to come, this facility and the people who deliver care will provide dedicated and compassionate end of life and palliative care equally for all 
residents of the Cowichan Valley. It is through the strength of the community partnerships between Cowichan Hospice, Cowichan Tribes, Island Health, volunteers, and the Ministry of Health that we are here today. And the many donations raised to support the facility through the Cowichan Hospice from the Cowichan Valley Regional Hospital District, the Cowichan District Hospital Foundation, the Cowichan Tribes, Auxiliaries, and many other generous community members. On behalf of the Island Health Board of Directors and our President and CEO, Kathy McNeil, I extend my appreciation to each and every person involved in making Couch and Hospice a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. Island Health's commitment to work with community partners to improve end-of-life care is certainly demonstrated here today. Please let me welcome Erin Stone, Mayor of Ladysmith and Chair of the Couch and Valley Regional Hospital District. Thank you, Krista, and thank you for everyone for joining us today. I'm joining you here from Staminas territory in the broader Coast Salish community throughout Couch, and I'm so blessed and honored to be here today on behalf of our board. And on behalf of all the families in the Cowichan region, I want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who helped make this possible. To every community member who participated in this process, to every donor who contributed to this work, to every physician, designer, every architect and every tradesperson, this is truly a house that love built. All of us that had a hand in this uh, reach out in gratitude to those who helped make this possible. I want to single out the Cowichan Hospice House team for their caring and steadfast commitment to our communities. And today, I especially want to help thank the Hospice House Task Force. It was, I was honored to play just a small role in that work, but through that experience, I got to see firsthand the collaborative and caring approach that made this, this project and this facility a reality. I saw the love of our doctors and caregivers, leaders and community members firsthand. The entire experience has been so well represented in every element of this place. To share this experience has been heartwarming and to be here today recognizing that this beautiful facility is now a reality and that families in the Cowichan Valley will have this place to spend the precious final moments together truly moves me. This place will allow families to direct their attention where it matters most to those they love. On behalf of our board at the Cowichan Valley Regional Hospital District, I'm so thankful to all of the people who have come together in collaboration to make this project a success. I raise my hands to everyone who worked so hard to ensure we provide this safe, comfortable, culturally sensitive and, and heartfelt space to be able to share those last moments together. So on behalf of our communities, I just want to reach out in gratitude to all of you and say, Heichka, thank you. Thank you, Erin. This local government's compassion for its regional citizens is demonstrated by your significant financial support to make Couch and Hospice House a reality. Much, much appreciated. And now I'd like to introduce you to my fellow Couch and Hospice Board member, our president, Jamie Goodman. Thank you, Krista. Um, I just want to let everyone know I'm joining this meeting on the unceded territory of the Couch and people. Um, good evening, everyone. I just want to thank you all for joining us for the virtual opening of the Couch and Hospice House. And when I joined the Couch and Hospice Society as a board member in 2008, the Hospice House was already a long-term dream, but the dream of fundraising to both build and operate the hospice was so daunting that it seemed out of reach. That all changed when the provincial government and Island Health announced that they would double palliative beds in our health region by 2020. With that announcement, the Couch and Ta Hospice Task Force was formed with the goal to construct and operate a hospice house for everyone in the Couch and region. I want to thank all those members of the task force, which is chaired by, which was chaired by tonight's uh, MC, Krista Fox, for their dedication, passion, commitment, and perseverance in making the hospice house a reality. I also want to thank Island Health for the collaborative relationship with Couch and Hospice and the task force. And most of all, I want to thank the community and all of those who made contributions, whether big or small, that made this wonderful gift of the Couch and Hospice House a reality in the Couch and region. To close, I'd like to share a personal story of why the Hospice House is so important to me. 
When I was 18, I lost my mom to cancer. In the last few weeks of her life, I woke up in the middle of the night to the sounds of my mom moaning and crying for help. I ran upstairs and found that she was on the bedroom or on the bathroom, but the door was locked. I quickly grabbed a coat hanger and jimmied the door open to find my 44 year old mom lying on the floor, too weak and in too much pain to get up. I picked her up and carried her to the living room couch where she had spent the last six months of her life sleeping because she was too weak and frail to go upstairs to the bedroom. I remember my dad providing her the best care he could while still having to work and provide for our family. The stress on him was something that I can't imagine. Now with the hospice house open, everyone in the couch and has the opportunity to spend the last days or weeks of their life in a beautiful home-like setting, being cared for by professional healthcare workers, hospice staff, and volunteers who are very passionate about their work. This will allow those who are dying and their loved ones to spend that last time, last days and weeks reminiscing, laughing, crying together, and even going for a walk in the hospice garden rather than having to worry about providing care and pain management. We all deserve that. Again, I want to thank everyone who made this dream come true. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. As you see, Couch and Hospice is a vital service within the fabric of our community. Couch and Hospice offers emotional support and information for more than 900 people a year. In the Hospice House, dedicated staff from Island Health provide compassionate nursing care alongside couch and hospice staff and volunteers who provide emotional and practical support for patients and families. And now I'm excited to share with you the result of our work together to raise couch and hospice house, the house that love built. Welcome to Cowichan Hospice House. Thanks to the generosity of people in Cowichan, the house that Love built is now open. Cowichan Hospice House expands the options for those exploring end-of-life care, offering personalized care and welcoming all from our community. Bright and airy private rooms offer a view of gardens, mature trees, and heritage homes. There is a private refrigerator for favorite foods, a television, and Wi-Fi access, and a bath designed with optimal privacy, safety, and care in mind. An expanding cuddle bed invites snuggling with a loved one. Each room also has a comfortable sleeper couch as an overnight option for a companion or guest, including well-behaved family pets. In the spa room, a jetted tub offers the possibility of a relaxing soak. The sacred space can offer privacy for reflection or a place to gather to honor important practices and traditions. Stained glass windows featuring our beautiful Cowichan Valley will complete this space. An integral part of this setting is the care center, where physicians, specially trained nurses, and upon request, a palliative physician will coordinate 24-hour personalized care Couch and hospice staff and well-trained hospice volunteers are also available to offer emotional support, a compassionate presence, a warm blanket, or just a cup of tea. Patients and their guests are invited to relax in a cozy family lounge with comfortable seating and a fireplace. There's a full kitchen and a dining area. The children's play area welcomes the youngest visitors to a place designed just for them. Garden paths invite patients and family members alike with places to gather and for solitude. 
thank you for helping people in Cowichan live well at the end of life. 